What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Um, this is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. They have an amazing conference with some of the top Amazon sellers and industry leaders, including today. We have Chaim. Uh, Chaim Justman, people call him Justin because it's probably easier to pronounce, but I got it rocked down. He's founder of refundsmanager.com. He's a software developer turned Amazon refunds hero. Uh, when I heard about Justin, what you offer, I was like, this is an absolute no brainer to use your company, but you obviously only work with sellers who have a certain volume of sales. And when we were talking, before we hit record, there's an objection you get that I did not expect, which we'll talk about. Um, the reason it's a no-brainer with a refunds manager is they charge you nothing up front and right. only get paid when they collect funds from Amazon's mistakes. Justin, Chaim, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jeremy, for taking the time to doing the interview. Yeah, so I want to talk about some of the common errors because you have a business because Amazon makes mistakes, right? right? So I want to hear about, we'll talk about some of the objections I mentioned, but what are some of the common errors that Amazon makes? Right, so um, we have like 17 different types of, of problems that we've come across. Yeah. Um, we'll just try to go. What's the most surprising for you that you're like, uh, you would never think Amazon would make a mistake on this? Um, I think the one that they say that they return the item to inventory and they actually don't return it to inventory. That's oh, really? like a very interesting, yeah. What that's happens one, yeah. to it? It just. Actually, what would happen is they have a report that's called a return report, and yeah. they tell the customer in the return report, you know, this item came back as a return, the customer returned it, and you know what? We took that item, we put it back into inventory. Sounds great, right? Yeah. What happens, but when we check the inventory of that item, that item never came back into inventory, yeah. you know? I mean, just, to, just that before, seems we start, before we start out, to track that. 99% of yeah. the times, they yeah. don't make mistakes. Right. Yeah. We're here for that 1%. And that's, you know, that shouldn't be happening yeah. either. But we're here for that 1% or sometimes a little bit less yeah. than 1% depending on the account. And those happen and that's what we're here for. Yeah. I mean, with someone who's doing lots of sales volume, that 1% right. adds up. Especially that yeah. everybody today is really working on a low margin. You know, there's 10 or 50 or 100 listings on every item. So everybody's margin is like pennies and exactly figured out. So, you know, sometimes that 1% can really add up to you. So what are some of the other common um, errors that Amazon makes? So um, another common error is that Amazon sometimes in the warehouse um, damages, destroys, or loses items. Mm -hmm. Am Amazon acknowledges that. You know, the, you, you know that Amazon has these huge warehouses and they have low-paying workers over there and things happen in the mm -hmm. warehouse. Sometimes they're full, sometimes they're not, but they usually reimburse. Now, when I say usually, that's where we come in because... There's the small percentage where they don't. They're supposed to re for damages. They're supposed to reimburse you within 10 days. Mm -hmm. for lost items within 30 days, and destroyed. They're not supposed to be destroying anything ever, except if it's a hazmat item. But so we wait that amount of days plus. So we usually wait like almost two months, sometimes longer, depending on the case type. And say Amazon, listen, this item got damaged. This item got lost. You never found it. The window that you're supposed to reimburse passed. Can you please uh, reimburse us what, what we're doing? So that's, that's, that's one of the few cases that we have. Um, and we also have a case where a customer is supposed to return an item and he never returns it and the, and the seller gets debited. So let's say I sell a camera for $100 and the customer gets it. He tells Amazon, I want to give back the item. Amazon gives him a label to print out. He's supposed to be sending back the item but he doesn't. Somehow, mm. item gets scanned as if it's going back, and that's when the seller gets debited. He's that the item is going back to him, but he ne but the, but it never comes back to Amazon's warehouse. So what happened was the seller got debited, 
for the return, but he never got the item back into his warehouse. So he's on a loss for that. Hmm. That seems impossible to track. Right. That's you know that's why we built the system um, <laughs> three years ago, and you know. I've been a programmer, so <laughs> constantly looking for ideas. We get feedback from from clients for ideas, and and. Because how do you fun. even discover this? This seems almost hard to track. And then how do you discover it's a problem? And then you have to build a software system to detect some of these things, right? So right. how did you detect that was even an issue? So most 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 of our clients are sure that we sell on Amazon, yeah. which is our number one disclosure. We do not me and not my wife and not my brother-in-law and a different name and all these things. We do not sell on Amazon. That's it's a big problem. objection, right? So so we make it clear to all our users we don't sell on Amazon. We're not going to compete with you. So that's our, that's why one of our main things. And the the way I came across it is I've been a software developer since um, two thousand when there was the big uh, tech startups and so I was working quite a few uh, startups and then I had my own software uh, development company that I opened up and uh, we slowly went into the Amazon inventory system there was so many people going to the Amazon um, seller platform and I built this platform that was keeping track of inventory it was doing multi-channel integration with Amazon and eBay and Sears and Newegg all those different marketplaces that are out there it was quite interesting. It was before there were like 50 companies doing that, but that was in 2009. And I actually had one client that was very nitty gritty, and you know, he looked at the numbers and he compared everything. He had his internal system, a DAS system, actually. It was interesting. And he came to me a few times and he said, You built a nice system, but the numbers that you have in your system showing Amazon has 100 pieces or 200 pieces. Doesn't match up to my system that I have in my in in, in my DAS system. He was really keeping track of everything. I know my DAS everything. system yeah. is bulletproof. I've been using it for forty years. <laughs> I told him, "Let me look at the numbers again. We'll go back, you know, and see." And I, I looked at it and I looked at Amazon again and again. I said, "You know what? Let's ask Amazon." She says, "No, Amazon can't be making a mistake. What big Amazon? You, their numbers are solid. You know, as as, as good as mine." So I said, you know what, let's give it a chance. We opened the case with Amazon. I said, listen, we shipped in 100 items. You received 50. We sold 40. We should have 10 left. You show zero. Waited a few days. Amazon comes back and says, you know what, you're right. You, you should have 10. You only have zero. Here's a reimbursement for 3,000 and change. Wow. I said, wow. Let's do another one. And we did another one. And we did another one. And that was like a huge eye opener. And I said, hey, instead of being busy with inventory, let's be busy with Amazon's mistake, and as I as 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 I got into it, I heard from customers different ideas where they found mistakes. We got feedback of, of from different sellers what they found, and right. we've tested it. You know, we tested with a few different customers that are willing to test it with us. And then once once we launch it, everybody gets the benefit of it for no extra cost, and th that's how we grew in the last four years. So we've, today we have over three thousand customers. Wow. So. Justin, when you decide, okay, I'm switching to refunds, being refundsmanager.com, right? What's the first thing you do? Because you don't have a software, but you have this inventory management software. What do you do when you first start this company? So the first thing, obviously, I was a programmer, so I yeah. built the, the database and the program and the coding. I got a basic server to do right. it. And but what did you I, build? You know, I, I told all of my, all of my friends that had the inventory system said, you know what, I have a great system. You can get money back from Amazon. And then nobody heard of that. I said, well, you're crazy. But they all, you know, had like a nice, a nice, a nice amount of customers starting out. That How did you know what to build, though, starting out? Oh, because I knew the Amazon API. API is the Amazon backend integration because I was using it for the inventory. So I knew right. how Amazon reports work. I knew how to get the data into, our, into the database. Mm -hmm. So once, once we had that in, to do the programming, that's the easy part for me. So, so the inventory in that situation didn't match up. What, and then you got feedback from different customers of what else has been issued. So what else did you add into this, the right. software? So like I mentioned before, the items that were damaged, lost in the warehouse, mm -hmm. orders that were not returned. Another um, thing is the orders that were overcredited. That means, um, let's say a customer buys the item for $100. And he 
for whatever reason, the item gets damaged, it comes down. She calls up Amazon. He's all angry. This was supposed to come on time for Christmas. Now I don't have anything to give to my daughter. He makes this whole big story. So Amazon <laughs> wants to make him feel good. And, and, and Amazon says, you know what? We'll give you back $100. So the guy says, no, but you ruined my whole holiday season. Samson says, you know, as a one-time courtesy, we'll give you another $50. So that extra $50 is considered Amazon's goodwill. Right. They're trying to go out of the way. They're giving you extra credit. Right. But that's supposed to be coming out of Amazon's pocket, not mm. from the seller's pocket. Many mm. times it comes out of the seller's pocket, and that's when we mm. go after that. That's another case. Another mm. case is um, a customer buys something. It sits in his house for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. A, a half a year later, it decides, you know what? Amazon accept has a very good return policy. They always accept whatever condition. I already used it. Let me return it to Amazon. So whatever reason Amazon accepts it, they put it back or they don't put it back. Now Amazon doesn't reimburse it and you have this crappy item that you can't even sell. So basically it's against Amazon's policy to accept anything beyond 30 days. Mm. You know, the holiday season they have a longer thing. You can actually give back until February 1st, sometimes longer, it's a little bit longer. We take those into consideration also, but anything outside of the window that Amazon gives you to return and was returned, Amazon didn't reimburse you for that, we go after, we go after those types of cases. Um, also, we go after anything, um, use a send-in, this is a simple case. You know, you send in 100, Amazon only receives 50, either gets lost, or damaged, whatever it is. And then we usually, in this case also, we wait at least 30 days to open a case for that. Then we have, we bumped into an interesting thing with the weight. There's, you know, FBA, every, every FBA item has different fees. There's a weight fee, that means how much it weighs. And there's dimension fee, how big it is. The smaller items, bigger items. And then there's a commission fee, depending which category right. it's falling under. They get as many so, fees in there as possible, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they also have storage fee. Which uh, you know, it's a little bit of a, a problem to go after. But meanwhile, we're going after the weight fees. So let's say if an item weighs 10 pounds, they're charging you for 20 pounds. Dimension, wow. let's say something is a little item, and they're charging you as this oversized. So that that I know, I understand why that happens. Because when somebody sends in an item to Amazon, they usually send it with their own packaging. There's some sellers that they have the same standard box for everything. And they're shipping in small items, big items, this big box. And when it comes into Amazon's warehouse, they have, you know, these lasers that are checking all the dimensions of everything. And when something comes in different than what they have in their system, they update it to the new dimensions. So it could be something with small and this one seller that has this crazy big box is messing it up for all the other ones. So what we do is if we find something that's totally off as far as dimensions or anything in the weight, we would open a case and give all the orders for the last 18 months, which is how much we go back. And the same thing with, with commissions. If we find any issue with commission fees being overcharged, then we, stay, you know, we tell them the right category is this, you should be charged, and that's basically how much we get back for them. This seems, is this impossible to detect on your own or do you need a certain software? Like are there uh, certain things that people can impossible. actually... Well, obviously yeah. I did it so anybody can do it. It's just that you need the time and the resources. We've been doing it for four years. So, you know, we know what to look for. We know, we know what Amazon's response are for most of these cases. So we know what to exclude from the cases that we open. Yeah. So, you know... Uh, like for Everything the lowest happy, hanging happy fruit, copied. when you go in and you get a new, this person's like, I need what you have, right? I need a refunds manager, um, help me. What's the lowest hanging fruit usually that you look at first for a company? Um, we don't have any anything in particular. The, the main thing we, we try to go is the highest value that are old. That means Amazon has a limit of 18 months. So as time passes by, you have less cases to file. That means if something got lost, seven. Oh, so you go ago. back eighteen months because right. those are going to basically drop off right. where you can't do anything so with if, them. So if we don't if we don't take take care of those first, you know, since since we do the cases very slowly, you know, we don't go and yeah. open twenty cases when we when you open an account. We do it very slowly. We have manual review. Somebody goes through all the cases, makes sure that it's valid, changes yeah. the text, makes it look normal. 
and then gives it over to Amazon. So we do only like a few cases at a time, not to overload Amazon system. And then as we get to it, so it's sometimes it might take, if it's a big account, it might take a month or two, sometimes a little bit longer. We try to get the ones that yeah. really are really old so we don't miss those. Yeah. I want to hear about some horror stories. You've probably seen a lot of them. There was one, so there was a $50,000 mistake? Yeah. So that's what something happened? that they, for the case that I just mentioned, for the commission fee, that we had one client that had an item that was miscategorized. It was put on the, the electronic accessories, which is a 15% category, and it should have been under the regular electronics, which is 8%. So mm. There's a 7% difference. So we went back. It's 18 months difference. and he must have sold thousands of that item and and yeah we got back on one one reimbursement you know we we see big reimbursements for for losses and damages but this was a really interesting case <clears throat> i didn't that realize we back. that there was that discrepancy of percentage that they charge you right yeah, correct yeah and there was also one with um ipads right what so that was that? an interesting story that we that is one of our customers they labeled this was actually the the seller was at fault over here they took the the iPads and you know putting the FN SKU those barcodes that Amazon gives you instead of putting it in each box individually they took it and they put it on the master carton of each mm. big box that has 10 in it wow so what happened I, was tell me which sent, one so i can go buy one <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> oh, that's a story 3 years ago <laughs> so when what happened was you know, when they scanned it into Amazon, they scanned it as one item, and the seller didn't even know about it until one of his customers was nice enough to call him. He says, you know what? I ordered one, and you sent me 10. That's so nice of you. And he says, what? <laughs> and then they realized what the mistake was. And actually, Amazon, on the first time that happened, they were quite good about it. And they actually reimbursed this guy. who was like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on, on that wow. one case because it was, you know, it was a huge... <clears throat> It was a huge case, actually. That's sort of a great the area is, this guy because up again, and Amazon said, "That's it. <laughs> you know, get your get your workers in your right. warehouse." Uh, yeah. Water over there. We're not going to be playing this game too much. Yeah. How do you overcome objections when people are very private, and they're and because the biggest objection you get is, do you sell? We want to keep it private. How do you overcome them? Right. So. To be honest, we don't always get over the objection. 99% of the times we do. And the, the way that we say it is, first of all, we don't sell on Amazon ourselves, yeah. which, is, which people see as a big uh, plus because, you know, we're not going to compete against them. Yeah. And second of all, we've been around for over four years. We have over 3,000 customers that put the trust in us. So, you know, we haven't ever they had They accept that to, or they don't type of thing. Right. Why do you think so people I've, I've are so... Had, sometimes have bigger, bigger users, like, you know, that do like... 20, 30 million a year. They want to meet face to face, and I totally understand that. And yeah. we, we've done that as well. Sometimes that builds the trust, just you know, meeting face to face and and getting to know each other. And sometimes that helps. What's the the best advice you've gotten from a customer for e-commerce? Um, what do you mean as, as, you know, as far as like, e Yeah, I'm sure you talk to a lot of e-commerce founders, a lot of customers. They all are business owners. I'm wondering <laughs> what's some of the best advice, you know, just through conversation that they've told you about selling um, on Amazon or online in general. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm, yeah. I don't usually speak to them about it. No. I, it's funny because, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of my friends are my customers. Yeah. And, you know, they sometimes approach me and they say, you know, you, you, you saw that we've been doing, we're doing really well in the last quarter or whatever. I tell them, I'm really happy that you're doing well. And, I'm, you know, I'm sure our account also is doing well. But to be honest, I don't really look into your account, how much money you're doing. You know, that's, if I would be busy with looking at everybody's account, I wouldn't, wouldn't have right. enough time to run my business. So I try to focus on what I do and yeah. what, we, what we do best. And... And try now, you know, not to be busy. I mean, sometimes I, I I know what which categories people are because just I I just right. know what the company name is and things like that. But I try not to right. get into the details right. of people sellers' account. Yeah, talk about the team a little bit. How do you build up a team? So you're you know obviously a software developer, so you need to build software. How do you develop a team? Because it sounds like there's a lot some manual processes right. in place too. So. The, the way that works, we have um, 
that's one of the good things that I said from day one is that we're always going to have live support. You know, it's not going to be that, oh, you can send the email and we have 24-hour um, response. So in regular business hours, we, you can always, people can always call us and mm-hmm. they found that being a real asset that they can always, you know, we have customer service, people answering the phones, clarifying any case, anything like that. And, and to be honest, I mean, our call volume is quite low. <laughs> you know, based based on the amount of customers we have. But if anyone does call, you know, we try to go through any cases, anything that they have questions about. And then we have a team of 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 people that just go through the cases and we try to keep that overnight so that way there's no confusion of which cases we did, which cases the customer did, and you know, we keep it overnight did most of the cases we do. And you know, I'm I'm not sure you're familiar, but probably Amazon has most of their um, support also overnight answering. So they 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 don't go to sleep. So we sometimes get an instant response overnight when we do when mm-hmm. we do our cases. Who do you hire first, Justin? Like when you it was just you and a program. The beginning was in the beginning was just me. Yeah. And everything was automated actually in the beginning. Yeah. And um, so it was a one man band. Everything was automated. Then you know I just I was just drinking coffee. But that Amazon <laughs> thing, <laughs> yeah, no, not exactly. But that's that's how you know that's how it seemed. But Amazon made things a little bit harder for us because um, first of all, they they said you know we can't you can't you can't have it all automated. You can't do so many cases. So they put limits on on mm. a lot of things. They you know, they didn't want to have. You know they they have. I'm 100 percent sure they have a lot of their responses automated. But yeah, they oh, yeah. want the sellers to open cases automated. So we had I had to get a team together of people doing actual cases so that that way the the, the sellers feel you know they don't have an issue with Amazon. And since since we went over like it was like three years ago, we went over to this human human reviewal. It's it's been going. Uh, what is it? Very, since we since we went over to the re- human review, oh, I got you. Reviewing it, we we you know we didn't hear from Amazon since. <clears throat> so after you, who do you hire first? So um, I had say a, a few salespeople that we hired. Yeah, to reach out to. to reach out to come to the shop. biggest issue. And correct me if I'm wrong. Is people just have never heard of you? Right. I mean, because there's no reason, unless someone's like very highly secretive, they don't want to give anyone details in their account. Um, But there's no reason not to use you besides that because you don't charge anything. Right. Um, So how do you get the word out? So we go to a lot of trade shows. The last um, year, I also hired them, people to do the blog, social media, all of that. So, you know, that's the only way to be out there these days. So you Mm -hmm. have to have blogs, you know, and... No podcasts like yours, um, trade shows is really good because people get you know to meet you actually face to face, and that's that's been quite good. We've been at the Prosper Show last year, that worked out quite well. Yeah. Also, what you did know, you? Good show. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, how was your experience? What did you? You had a booth there last year. Yeah, I had a booth. I had an exhibit um, booth right where across where you came in. Actually, this time we have the booth right where you come in, so you're not going to be able to miss us. And yeah, it was a real good combination of sellers because you know we're not looking for the really low sellers like you, like you mentioned in the beginning. Anyone yeah, you sell? need a certain volume of sales volume. Right. Yeah. And sometimes the real big ones, you know, we have most uh, a lot of the a lot of the big ones, but something that's it's harder to convince them. But it was like a lot of medium medium to large sellers. So it was a real good mix. Yeah. It was a really good show. So what are you gonna do this year? <clears throat> differently because of what you learned from last year? Um, I think we might invest a little bit more on the booth and things like that. Maybe some more salespeople. But, you know, it was quite good last year. Yeah. What works at the booth? Um, just getting as much interaction as you can. Just standing out there. Like I remember I went to IRCE and right. someone had a, a thing Helicopter? of bacon. Oh, okay. In Chicago. They had a, like an open thing of bacon. And the smell, you probably don't eat bacon, but the smell no. of bacon and just the look of it, it, like it made you kind of look over. So I'm wondering if you have any interesting right. things that so you guys IRC, do. We actually exhibit the IRC also, doing it for four years already. Yeah. And 
um, the thing with IRC is they have like nine, ten thousand oh, crazy. walking walking dials. You've been there, you know. Yes. And for th- I've seen crazy gimmicks that people do over there. I I, rem- I can't. I'm, I'm never gonna forget. We had once had a booth. It was across some other guy, and he was flying helicopters all over the place, and it was like <laughs> bothering us the whole show. <laughs> But but I'm lucky I wasn't now. Now you're telling me that I'm lucky I wasn't across this booth that had the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so someone's flying like a helicopter, like remote control helicopter. Yeah, yeah. He's saying you know you come into this type of um, you put in uh, your phone number and then you, if you come out your your name and number comes out and you win a hell of flying helicopter, mm-hmm. or whatever, which never never works. But okay. <laughs> so anything else you've seen that you like that worked or that you're gonna do? Um, well, we'll like still, how do you I make know, refunds I, I, manager sexy? It's like, okay, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I think it's attractive on its own. It just is the fact, just the fact that it's, you know, that you don't pay anything if you if we don't get back anything for you. You know, most people you know, as soon as they see the concept, they're like, wow, yeah. that's amazing. How do you come up with? And this may change. This is right as of now. You. You your uh, percentage is twenty five percent, right? It's on the website. How do you come up with twenty five percent? What's the thought process? So basically, the, when I was looking at anything in the industry that's similar to what, what we're doing, yeah. it's UPS ordering, UPS, FedEx, yeah. DHL. So there's there's a system which many are uh, familiar with is that you know if you send a package overnight and it's supposed to get by ten a.m. if it gets at ten fifteen they they dispute it. Basically, they go through your bill and, and they charge you 50%. Yeah. So I said, so 50% is a number, you know, people are willing to work with. But I said, you know, people here have actual overhead and... and, and yeah, they're physical they products. They really, yeah. really, you know, something that you can't refuse. I, I said, you know, let's go half of that. 25% is a number that, listen, if we get back for you $10,000... And we take twenty five hundred. It's seventy five hundred dollars you didn't have yesterday, and that's something that I, I think I think that's you know you're getting more than what I'm getting is, is, right. is something that entices people to sign yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. So Justin, you grew up in Brooklyn, right? So when you were growing up, um, what did you want to be? Mm, to be honest, I wanted to be a bookseller. A bookseller? What do you mean? Yeah, Jewish books. Like a, a like a I, store. Know, I, I like yeah, have a store and and sell religious uh, reading books. Yeah, that's what I want today. <laughs> what is it? Someone in your you family tried, have one of those? Maybe eventually I'll end, I'll end up there. You know, you'll have a Jewish books on Amazon store. Right. So so we you can live the your dreams. Same ideas as Amazon. You know, so, they also started with books. <laughs> so why that as a kid? Did someone a family uh, member? It's just that I I love reading. That's something yeah. I that I still like doing. Yeah. You know? What do you do? You have favorite business books? Um, nothing in particular. A lot of you know self help books. Like what? Books. What are some of your favorites? I'm always looking for recommendations. Mm, nothing in particular no. coming to me, but you know, Man's Search for Meaning is one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, Frankel, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm short book, but very on yeah. point. You know, a lot of people have taken that message and blown it up into very big books. <laughs> But I think, yeah, I think he gets his message, yeah. He gets, yeah. gets his message across very well. What else is on your top book recommendations? I, 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 can't, re- I can't remember right now offhand, but, you know, I've, I probably finish one or, one or two books a week, so I have you quite do. a lot. Of what, are you re- listen, what are you reading or listening to now? Um, I'm reading a book. What's, what's the name of it? It's, it's in Hebrew. It's called... Uh, hmm. Chayot Kodesh, the whole, you know, it's basically taking certain stories of the Talmud and comparing them to certain stories that, you know, in, in other literature. And it's very interesting how it, it, certain things that we have in, in, in our stories compared to, you know, worldly, like, fiction stories and what the point is, you know, what they wanted to tell, tell you about these types of stories. It's, it's a really interesting book. So um, when you what, sit down to read, you're, are you reading more um, kind of philosophical religious books or more business books or a combination? Um, I would say 70% philosophical religious mm-hmm. book and, you know, probably like 
20 to 30 percent business books yeah mm -hmm. um so i want to talk about the some of the lows and the highs right it wasn't maybe it was maybe it was all smooth sailing but a lot of people i talked to it's not because um, it sounds so far like really smooth sailing. Like, okay, I had this software company and then I, I kind of iterated <laughs> and went to refunds. Yeah, that, that's the thing in today's age. Yeah. Everybody thinks that everything, you know, you just make an Instagram picture. You only put the good pictures. You never put really what's going right. on in your house, right. right? Right. So what's some of the, the challenges that you've had to face through having your own so, business? So um, I brought it up briefly before. Yeah. I think the main challenge is what Amazon challenged us um, three and a half years ago and when they said that, you know, you can't do it automated. So, you know, you know, we had to really rethink the whole business model, how to do it. And when they came out with this policy, we put the whole business on hold. Mm. So it was like quite a few months where there was no revenue coming in. Right. And we had to rethink how, you know, how to get it that Amazon should have, you know, should have make any issues and how to get back all the, all the customers that, you know, I got scared from Amazon, you know, that's the worst, the worst thing to get a bad email from Amazon, you know, that's everybody's nightmare. Right, exactly. And they all got scared away. Amazon scared them away. And, yeah. and you know, I had, had to get salespeople to actually, you know, get on the phone, call the people. Most people didn't want to answer. My, they saw refunds from Amazon. They didn't want to answer, you know, and just to get them to explain, the, you know, what we were doing and, you know, what we were doing, Amazon perceived as being wrong, what we're doing now. And, it took some time to to get people back on, and yeah. thank God, you know, we got every, you know, we didn't get everyone back, but we got most most of the people that we wanted to get back, we got back on, and 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 some people that saw a year later that you know they're doing great and their friends are getting back thousands of dollars, they didn't want to miss out, and they 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 joined us right. eventually. So, talk about that for a second, because I think so at that time. You know, th this happens all the time in a lot of industries. It could be an industry, it could be a company. Like in this case, it was Amazon, and that just happened with, you know, not too long ago, the Amazon cracked down on the reviews, right? Right. Um, so the same thing's happening for those type of companies of what you went through at right. the time. Um, you know, talk about, like, at the time when this happened, were you married? Do you have kids? Like, what's going on? It's not like just you in a basement. You're like, okay, I'll figure out a way. Like, there's other people who are affected by this, right? Right. I mean, thank God that the... The, the period before that was a very successful one. Right. So even though you know there was no revenue for quite a few months, you can weather it a little bit. I was I was able to weather it quite quite fine, you right. know. And until I got everything back, it, it was hard. I can, you know, especially that you used to, you know, having all these clients and everything, and then suddenly, boom! It's, it's like from a hundred to zero. It, it, it was right. hard, but we went through it, and you know, we, we we've yeah. come we've come out stronger and and much better after yeah. that. No, I like to hear this just because your process for when crap hits the fan. You know, right. so it sounded like you just kind of put everything on pause, you analyzed everything and figured out the new path and then went back to the customers to tell them because were they getting an email from Amazon, like an automated right. email saying yeah. Yeah. you are doing something wrong? Exactly. That that was the problem. And that freaked them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got this email saying, oh, you're in violation of... This. So they, they did two things. Two months before, before they did this, they changed the, pol the policy. So we were able, in the beginning when we did the system, for the first six months, we were able to go back and get back money as far as we wanted. We had a customer, we went back to 2006. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing was that any reimbursement that you asked previously to 2009 they basically gave it to you because their system was so messed up they weren't able to prove you differently <laughs> you know if you just told them this missing guy oh, okay so i mean except if it got to a higher amount but it, so what they did was they first of all they changed the policy you know they changed it in the, in the terms of certain services uh, in agreement you can only go back 18 months they didn't notify the sellers about that but they made the change and we weren't aware of it to begin with and we were processing processing cases so we got a lot of denials so i don't know what that trigger of amazon but now they now they had this big monster saying oh refunds manager is doing automated and they're opening a lot of erroneous cases 
<laughs> they're not telling the whole story. The story is, you know, you changed your policy. You didn't tell anybody about it. Right. And now we have a lot of cases that you're denying because you changed your policy. Yeah. That was one. And then they changed in the in the in the policy that you're not allowed to use an automated service. And then they sent this email to all the customers. You're using automated service. You we see that you're using uh, refunds. They didn't. Sometimes they said the name. Sometimes they didn't. The funny thing is, I had one of my customers told me that Amazon actually called him up. And told them, you, we see that you're using Refunds Manager. If you don't close it, we're going to close your account right away. He says, what happened? I mean, what's going on? We're asking our money back and, you know, you shouldn't have messed up. He says, so this rep told him, you should know that since Refunds Manager opened up, we had to open up a whole new department to handle wow. all these cases. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so I, I, that, that customer actually came back and, you know, and, and we're doing really great for his account now. But... It was really, really interesting. Um, that is interesting. So you've caused Amazon to open a separate department. <laughs> yeah. It was it was really interesting. You know, I, I always say that if Amazon in the beginning would have come to me and made an offer, you know, we'll give you $25 right. million dollars and close shop and don't tell anybody about it, they would probably be more profitable. <laughs> <laughs> if I email this interview to Jeff Bezos, you may get like, he's like, yeah, yeah maybe we, we should make this guy an offer. Yeah. He can't refuse. Um, so today the awareness is out there. So, so uh, that's on the low point side of things, right? What about what's been one of the proudest moments? So I think that you know the low to the high is always is always the highest, the proudest moment. So yeah. the way that we're, we're able to figure out a solution to the low and actually find a way of Solving this this problem, people, getting people on that was that was the that was the biggest high I think you know even though today we have more customers and uh, things like that but the the biggest high was that we were able to solve it and get get the, get our customers back and get you know get their confidence and trust again that, yeah that was that was the, that was the high so the high you know sometimes is relevant to the low right so coming out of that, that it's was all really great right it's all relative. Yeah. Um, so what's in the pipeline? What's in the future for refunds? Um, we tried doing different avenues, different things, but we realized there's other competition doing it, and you know we didn't really pursue other things. I know that we're good at this, and we're staying at this. Yeah, we're actually working on one or two different cases. I I have like a team of two or three customers that they're they're my feedback team. Mm. They, we always they come with ideas to me. I discuss it with them, and we they're like Amazon geniuses. They're like real, real, really good. Yeah. And because then, anything they tell you benefits them in the end, because right. you can implement it and save them more money. So I made a deal with one of these guys. Says, you know what? Bring me, bring me a case. We'll run it through your account. Then you're not going to pay for it. <laughs> and you know, that really worked out for him. He he made nice, quite a nice amount of money on that one. That so, will incentivize them for new ideas because you're yeah. like, we'll do a test with you, and I won't charge you for this test mm-hmm. to see what happens. Right. So you know, so, so I have one or two, a few customers that are really good. You know, they know the. Sometimes I say they know it even better than I know it because they're the ones that are on the floor. They're the ones that are actually selling, so they can come back and say, "This is what's happening. This is you know, January first. I actually got off the phone with one of them uh, two hours ago, and he told me, you should know January 1st. I'm not going to get into the details about it because we're still reviewing it. January 1st, Mm. Amazon changed something, how they're charging certain fees. Mm. And, you know, look into this. We're looking into it. We're seeing how Amazon is handling it. And, you know, so it's really interesting. How do they know that? Like, they don't get an alert or anything, do they? No, it's just... They're they're not reading... Yeah, they're like looking at the reports like crazy, and you know, and they they're saying, "Wow, this is like something doesn't make sense over here." And you know, they're 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 number people, the people that are really into the numbers, and 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 they're looking at the financial numbers constantly, and things just just pop up, and it doesn't make sense. I see. So they're they're pulling up the reports from the Amazon dashboard, looking through it, and they're seeing differences from what it used to be, right. even though it should be the same. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot in the pipeline here, Justin. Um, What else from the story of Refunds Manager? What did we miss? What should we add? Um, Where should we lead people? Um, 
I think anybody that's not signed up, you know, can just uh, should review it and certainly give us a chance. Let us prove our let us prove ourselves. What's the? Do you have a? Is it a case by case basis, or is there a benchmark of like you need to be doing a certain number of units to actually be considered? Um, you can be considered. There's there's no block on the site to sign up. You know, we have customers signing up that have two thousand dollars of, of sales. It's just that. These customers usually take away our customer service resources right. because they're calling up every few few days. Hey, I signed up two days ago and we didn't get any reimbursement. You know, they thought they're going to get reimbursed more than what they sell. You know, mm-hmm. that's not happening. So um, we don't have, but the, the the truth is the maximum is once you're doing like a million a year. Even mm-hmm. though I, I have some smaller sellers, you know, that yeah. are so that's stuff, the they, they, they don't look anything at their account. And we've been able to get back a few thousand dollars, sometimes larger amounts yeah. even. But most most of the time, it's people doing a million a year yeah. and FBA, those and, and above. So someone doing 10, 20, 30,000 a month, would you turn them away? Or what do you do with those people? No, like I said, I, we don't turn anybody away. You know, We'll oh. review their account, see if there's anything that we can find. You know, $10 mm-hmm. saved, $10 earned is... Okay. Well, I know because it's, it's <laughs> you only have so many resources, right? You right. only have so many resources of people. And so I don't know if it's like, well, if you don't meet this threshold, we really can't serve you. Right. You know? So, you know, we, we've never turned anybody away. The only, the only thing is that if you sign up, we don't find any cases. Don't, you know, don't come to us and say, hey, you didn't find anything. <laughs> right. you know, we can only find if if you you know if you have the volume. It's an here, audit. It's, it's, yeah. only, it's only a percent. It's a real you know. It's, it's a percent. Most of the times, it's even less than a percent. Yeah. So. Yeah. You have to have the volume there. Yeah. Um, you know, Justin, thank you so much. It's been. I, it's really interesting to hear the behind the scenes. What people aren't really looking at because no one wants to look at the numbers in a fine tooth comb like like you've created. So where should we point people towards? People can go to refundsmanager.com, That's any right. particular other places or blog posts we should point um, people towards? They can go to refundsmanager.com. You mm-hmm. also have a blog on the website, which has mm-hmm. a lot of information. You yeah. have some really good um, blog posters that, uh, yeah. that I hired. Yeah, I was looking through them. And um, mm-hmm. do you write them? How does the, how does no, the content work? No, I have someone work? that... that I can't do everything. <laughs> I mean, so not I you, have but a the team. That runs the social the, media team, yeah. The writer does write it. I didn't know if you have like guests, uh, some of them guest posts. Like, you have a really interesting post on the Amazon Go, kind of what's cutting edge in industry and Amazon, and like right. Amazon Go and the psychology behind that. Um, so, you have an internal team doing that. Right. So, they, they do the, the, the post, the Twitter, and the Facebook, LinkedIn, those, and those things. Yeah. I, no I, I just get to look at it, like, you know, before they post. Sometimes, sometimes not even that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're a really good team, and I really rely on them, so they're they're yeah. quite good. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna be the first one to thank you, and um, I look forward to seeing you at Prosper Show. Same here. Thank you so right. much for your time. I really thank appreciate it. If you find the sand right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.